whenever the idea of outsourcing communication or outsourcing anything period comes up, I direct people to this. And it's, you know, we've all worked with matrix uh, matrices before. And this is, this is, this is precious to me because this is the simplest way to strategically decide whether you outsource something, whether it's so low value that you eliminate it, which is sometimes scary, but sometimes eliminating something is the single greatest boost that you can give to yourself. Do we retain it, right? I mean, what does this core team look like when you say, all right, we've got communication folks, we want to retain. What is it? What is this? What does this retained team look like? There's so many things in communication and marketing, so many specialties. What are those specialties that are going to be the best driver for us? And then, of course, the one in the top left is form a strategic alliance. So if I would have asked you where you plot donor communications, period, kind of as an overview on this map, two years ago, most of you would have said right there, right? It's not really high value in most cases. We're trying to get it done for as affordably as we possibly can because we need to spend our time face-to-face, knee-to-knee. We need to focus on events where we bring people in and give them mission experiences. And so communication is just sort of a tool to get them there. The crazy thing, if you talk to major gift donors two or three years ago, they would have told you something else. In fact, a statistic suggests that Uh, 57% of donors, kind of donors across the spectrum, leave every year because of, get this, drum roll, poor communications. And when you drill down and you ask them, well, what do you mean you got poor communications? You got calls from us and you got um, letters from us and you got thank yous from us. How How did we miss the boat on communicating with you? And they tell you that they just didn't feel the energy. They didn't feel the donor experience. They, what they got kind of felt like um, a bridge to asking them for more money rather than a true mission experience. So it would have been hard. It would have been difficult maybe to convince you to push donor communications up in value, um, up in strate- uh, strategic importance a couple of years ago. But then COVID hit, right? And we went, oh, no. It's all we got now. Um, And all of a sudden you realize we have some limitations. Um, We don't know digital. We never transitioned from a print strategy to a digital strategy. We never thought about holding virtual events. We never, so it kind of blows your mind to think about like all that you're under. And that may be very well while some of you are here today to sort of figure this out. Like, okay, even if, even when we go back to kind of a a post-COVID reality, What's going to stick? What are we going to need to hang on to? What are we going to need to invest in now that pays itself back now, but also build something toward the future? So when I'm asked this question, I always kind of put it in a a couple of different buckets. I said, let's look at strategic alliance first, right? We know when we talk about outsourcing, we, we, we know what that old model of outsourcing communication talent looks like. Let's talk about what the new form of outsourcing looks like. And maybe it's not even called outsourcing anymore, right? Maybe that's an old way of thinking about it. Um, maybe donor communications has elevated itself to high enough importance that we need to think about forming strategic alliances. And so in this bucket, I have two C's and two S's. The first C is case. Right. So you may have a writer on your team that you feel like has done a great job capturing your voice, that they're they understand, they, they get the philanthropic piece. If you've got that, you're lucky. You're really lucky. Um, most don't. Most struggle with case development. They end up writing it between themselves and other people in the organizations. And, and then they're kind of like, should we hand this out to donors or, and skip their reaction? And then they do. And the donor says, I don't get it. Um, we got to get away from that, right? So there, there are folks out there that you can access that know how to write a case statement, that have written them before. And this is the cornerstone document, this cornerstone piece of messaging for everything you do to engage your donors. So when you think about forming strategic alliances and you think about donor communications, consider case in that. Now, the second C is campaign. And this is a lot easier for us to understand, right? In campaign, we've got day-to-day fundraising obligations and day-to-day communication obligations, but now we have 
this whole other thing that's kind of brought on top of us. So this is a natural one. We understand like, okay, in campaign, we need to think about forming a strategic alliance. It's not about hustling and getting all your, your copywriters and designers from all around and trying to bring them in and organize them. Um, if you're lucky and you have a communication um, marketing team that says, we're gonna handle campaign communications for you, that's great. Still, I think it's wise to hire somebody to put a philanthropy lens on it. We know that marketing, uh, some marketing departments are amazing, right? And they've done this long enough and they know the voice and they got it covered. Other times, if you're a little bit less sure that your in-house marketing team gets it, that's where maybe hiring somebody from the outside to come in and kind of act again as a, as a buffer, as somebody who can kind of open up some new insights on that. Now, the two S's are pretty straightforward, strategy and storytelling. Strategy, obviously, if you're working with um, a strategic partner, they're probably helping you with all your strategy. But also think about communication strategy, right? Is there somebody out there that can help you sort of take your overall strategy and then apply a communication lens to it, right? Whether those goals are to prospect or grateful engagement or to just kind of re-inspire your donors, having a great strategy is, is really critical. And again, a little bit heavier lift than maybe somebody that you would think about for outsourcing. 